A couple of weeks ago, Leica posted finally firmware 2.0 for the Leica SL2 and a week ago I posted my first look at the new multi-shot option which the firmware now offers, where you can actually by pixel shifting get images in the RAW format with 187 megapixels and I also compared them with the native 47 megapixel resolution. So I will post the link below in the info box if you want to look this up. Now in this video I want to compare the multi-shot option on the Leica SA2 with the Phase 1 IQ4 and that's a camera which natively shoots 150 megapixel. It's a camera where I did quite some reviews on my channel. It's a camera I like because it enables very large prints to be sold to clients and uh, it is a very special camera. It is also a very expensive camera. So the price tag of this camera you can count with about $40,000 whereas the Leica SL2 without lens has a price tag between $6,000 and $7,000 give or take. So the battle in this video will be between the Phase 1 for $40,000 and the Leica SL2 for $6,000. In terms of lenses, I tried to make them comparable as good as possible. So on the Phase 1, I used the Schneider Kreuznach Blue Ring Lens, 55mm, widest open aperture f2.8. And on the Leica SL2, I used the Apo Summicron, 35mm, widest open aperture f2.0. And I will explain in a moment why this is a comparable setup, but let's get started with the video now. So let's start with some basics on sensor technology before we come to the shooting. So here you see three different sensor formats. From the left to the right we start with the Leica SL2 and a so-called full frame sensor. I come back to this in a moment. In the middle you see the Hasselblad X1D Mark II which is already a medium format sensor but a cropped size. And then on the right hand side we see the Phase 1 IQ4 digital back which is a full size medium format sensor. So when we compare the multi-shot 187 megapixels on the Leica SL2 with the 150 megapixels native resolution on the Phase 1 IQ4, we are basically seeing a battle between a full-size medium format sensor and a full-frame sensor. So that full-size or full-frame medium format sensor in the Phase 1 IQ4 is huge compared to the sensor of the Leica SL2. Below the sensors you see now the dimensions of the sensor size and clearly on the Leica SL2 you have the full frame or typical full frame dimensions and on the Phase 1 IQ4 you have the full medium format specs. Looking at the sensor specs and building the ratio between the X dimension and the Y dimension yields the aspect ratio and on the Phase 1 IQ4 we have a typical medium format aspect ratio of 4 to 3 whereas on the Leica SL2 we have the typical aspect ratio of 3 to 2 which is representative for the full frame format. For the shooting we need to compare the different focal lengths and for this we need the crop factor and since the sensor on the Phase 1 is 2.5 times larger than the sensor in the SL2, we have a crop factor of 0.64. The way we apply this now is as follows. We want to shoot on the Leica SL2 with the Apo Summicron 35mm. Now in order to get the matching focal length on the Phase 1 system, we can divide 35mm by 0.64, which yields close to 55mm. So all in, in our setup, we have kind of comparable focal length now on both cameras, but having said that, and that's an important disclaimer here, a medium format sensor is something completely different than a full frame sensor. And uh, clearly a medium format sensor will in most situations be superior. Having said that, the quality of modern full frame sensors like we have it in the Leica SL2 is so good these days that the comparison makes sense, but it's not a scientific comparison. We just shoot the same scene with both cameras with the 55mm on the Phase 1 and the 35mm on the Leica SL2. We'll compare the results and this is all about resolution here and clarity of the picture and not so much about a scientific comparison of medium format to full frame format. I decided to do the shooting indoors because I want to avoid for the multi-shot option on the Leica SL2 any wind or movements 
any disturbance which can occur if you shoot outside. The main subject of my shooting is an old book about Hasselblad and the Hasselblad camera brand. It's a nice book, just let's have a look what this book has to offer here. So let's get the shooting done with the phase one. You see here the digital back on the LCD. Focus peaking is activated. You see this in green here and I can zoom into 100%. Currently on the Schneider Kreuznach lens, I'm on manual focus. I'm adjusting to get the sharpest representation here and uh, I will also show the shooting parameters in a moment. Scrolling through the scene, there is a lot to detect and discover in that scene and clearly I placed my Hasselblad X1D Mark II in front of the book just to get the scene the right atmosphere. I'm fully on manual mode, I have 0.5 seconds of exposure time, an ISO of 100 and the aperture close to f16. I've activated the self timer in order to avoid any vibrations or shakes and now switching to live view and seeing the full scene I can basically push the soft shutter button with a 10 second delay and the image will be taken by the camera. Checking the image by double tapping into the scene which brings me up to 100% zoom. I see that everything is nicely in focus and sharp. We can even read what's written in the book which is nice and I think the first shot for the comparison has been taken. Let's now switch to the Leica SL2 and let's look into the settings. So I'm here in manual mode. I have 0.5 seconds exposure time, same as on the phase one, ISO 100, same as on the phase one, aperture of f16, same as on the phase one. Now here someone might argue you need to adjust the aperture by the crop factor in order to make it completely comparable, but I leave it here at f16 and there is a long debate with pros and cons whether a crop factor should be applied to an aperture or not. I just leave it here as it is and it will in any way serve the purpose here. What remains to do is to go to self timer. So I choose here drive mode. I scroll to the right hand side and choose a two second self timer. Then the shot will be taken and it's the normal shot, not multi shot yet. And of course I want to check sharpness now and want to see if everything is sharp and in focus. And yes, we can still read what's on display in the book. I think that's nice. And uh, now let's go to the multi shot mode. That's under drive mode. And then in drive mode, you go all the way down to multi shot. We leave the self timer at two seconds and uh, we can go for the shot. And since we have autofocus here on the Leica SL2, it's very simple. Just focusing by the shutter button and releasing the shutter will trigger the multi shot algorithm in the camera where the camera takes eight frames, all shifted by half a pixel in various directions. And then again by an in camera algorithm. These eight images will be put together or combined into one single frame, which will be in the raw format and will have 187 megapixels of resolution. As said before, check out my video where I explain all this. Link is down below in the info box. So I'm now here in Capture One and uh, we have on the left hand side here the Leica SL2 multi shot image. And on the right hand side, we have the Phase One IQ4 image. And you see the aspect ratio is different as said before. And uh, let's quickly look into the metadata. So on the Leica side here, we have 16736 times 11168 in terms of resolution. Whereas on the um, phase one, we have 14204 times 10652. So here the resolution is a little smaller because we compare here 187 megapixels on the Leica SL2 multi-shot image versus 150 megapixel on the phase one IQ4 image. So that's, I think, the first thing to note here. By the way, I stored the image on the phase one in the best available non-compressed format, which is the IRQL 16 bit. And uh, let's scroll down a little bit here, by the way, you see the lens here. So that's the Schneider Kreuznach blue ring lens, 55 millimeters, widest open aperture F 2.8. Here we've shot the image with ISO 100 as shown before. 0.5 seconds exposure time f16 in terms of aperture and then all the other parameters here on the Leica side We have 
the comparable parameters, ISO 100, 0.5 seconds, F16, again, you can debate whether this should have been scaled by the crop factor, but I left it here at F16. And so in general, we have now all the information we need to actually compare those two images. So let's now have a deeper look into these images here. Left-hand side, Leica SL2, right-hand side, phase one IQ4. Let's zoom in to the book first. And you see here, clearly the resolution on the Leica SL2 side is completely stunning. And on the phase one IQ4, that's meeting my expectations. It's a super expensive camera. It has a native 150 megapixel resolution. So clearly we'll get a lot of detail here, but on the Leica SL2 side, this is really blowing me out of my shoes because you natively have a 47 megapixel sensor and you're climbing up here to 187 megapixels in raw format, which is pretty nice. I should say that I use the multi-shot option various times on my Sony a7R4. And uh, sometimes I get artifacts in these images, even if the scene is completely still. That seems not to be the case in the Leica SL2, and maybe it pays back that it took them so long to implement that multi-shot feature finally in their firmware after announcing it more than half a year ago when they introduced the camera to market. Let's crop in a little bit in the image. So here are my chewing gums. And you see on both sides, the image is super crisp and super clear looks very, very nice. There is a book here on that shelf. Fractals, chaos and power loss, minutes from an infinite paradise. Same here. So really, really impressive what we get on that multi-shot feature from the Leica SL2. So let's go back into the book here and let's go on the Leica SL2 side up to 200% crop. Again, really impressive what we see here. Let's do the same on the phase one side here. 200% and let's pinch to zoom a little more to make these images completely the same size and comparable. And what you see here, there is a bit more clarity on the phase one IQ4 side here. So here it is a little bit fuzzy, but only a tiny little bit, I should say. And you are here on a 200% crop, which is impressive. That means you are already printing beyond the 187 megapixels, significantly beyond here and it still looks very good. So when you look into that article here, whenever camera of this type have been discussed, their development has been precluded on the ground that they would cost too much. So really impressive. You can read everything. All the detail is there. Everything you want to see in that book is fully in the image. Looks really good. Here again, I would say the Phase One IQ4 side has a little bit more clarity than what we see on the Leica SL2, but not too much. So they are really comparable. Maybe we go again to the chewing gums. Don't get me wrong. This is not my favorite kind of candy I'm using here, but it's just so stylish on that shelf here. So let's go up here to 200%. Still a lot of clarity and a lot of detail. There is absolutely nothing where I could complain about. Let's do the same on the phase one IQ4 side. Pinch to zoom a little bit. Let's put them side by side looks really, really good. Again, I would say here it's a tiny little bit sharper. It has a bit more clarity. So I would call the left hand side on the Leica SL2 very sharp and the right hand side on the phase one IQ4 tech sharp, but not a really big difference given the price tag we have between those two cameras and the fact that on the Leica SL2, we talk about an enhancement based on in-body image stabilization where eight images are composed into one image which have been shifted by half a pixel before. That's just an impressive technology and it seems to work completely flawless compared to other camera brands where you sometimes have these artifacts when they compose the final image with the high resolution. The last task I gave myself in this little exercise was to tweak the left hand side means the Leica SL2 image in post-processing to get it as close as possible to the right hand side where the native 150 megapixels clearly shine on the phase one IQ4 image. And this is the result. And I would dare to say that these images are very close. And please bear in mind that this is at the 200% crop here. So typically you would do a print at 100% and not at 200%. And uh, this is really comparable to what we have on the right hand side. And uh, I think there are some tiny little elements which differ. So for instance, here, when we look at Beats US camera firms, 
you have tiny little gaps in the dots here, which you don't have here on the right hand side when you shoot 150 megapixels natively with the phase one. But that's complaining at a high level because as soon as you go back to 100%, this will no longer be visible. So if we go here to 100%, this is absolutely not recognizable and that's your print size. So you typically would print at one on one and not at two on one. Let's go back to 200% here to finalize the discussion. So the result is pretty clear. The Leica SL2 multi-shot feature works absolutely flawless on that camera with the new firmware 2.0. Second, it is comparable to some extent to what you can get, but only, underline only, in terms of resolution from a full medium format sensor like you have it on the Phase 1 IQ4. So the resolution is almost at par. The native resolution, which is also slightly lower, 150 megapixels versus 187 megapixels, is providing more clarity than what you get on the multi-shot. But the multi-shot comes very, very close, given that this is a digital enhancement based on sensor shift by half a pixel and composing eight frames into one frame. It's an astonishing result and is very well usable in real life situations. Now, the last point I wanna make is clearly resolution is not everything when it comes to sensor. And I explained it before when we looked in sensor technology in the first part of the video, a medium format sensor is a completely different type of animal than a full frame sensor. So there are good reasons why people like me for certain situations, for certain clients, go for a full medium format sensor with native 150 megapixels. But bear in mind the price tag between these cameras is huge. So on the left hand side you have $6,000 plus on the body without the lens and on the right hand side you have $40,000 plus without the lens and that's a huge price tag. And if normal people, normal quote unquote, really want to go for that super expensive option on the right hand side, if they can get that close with a multi-shot options, that's of course in the eye of the observer and everyone's own decision. If you liked that video, please give me a thumbs up. If you like my channel, stay tuned on my content and subscribe. Thanks for watching and peace out.